Hello and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. So after many years of waiting, Cell Song is finally out, and people are really loving it, so the game has a ton of very positive reviews. It has also sold over 4 million copies, that's an insane amount. But while the reviews are all very positive, there is one common negative thing about a bunch of them. A lot of them mention how the game is actually very difficult. So this opens up the never-ending usual game design debate, the debate that happens every time a hard game comes out. So in this case, it's Cell Song, in other cases, it's Elden Ring, it's Sekiro, and so on. It's always about game difficulty, and what exactly is the correct game difficulty? This is a very important topic, it is something that can pretty much make or break your game. You've got various options for how you want to handle difficulty in your own games. In a bit I will share my advice on what I think you should do with regards to difficulty, whether you should follow basically the Souls-like formula or not. But yeah, this is a very important topic, so I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. So over here I wrote, Song Song is out now, and most people are loving the game. However, some people are finding the game to be a bit too difficult, meaning the usual game difficulty debate is on fire once again. This happens every time a Souls game comes out. So yeah, before this was Elden Ring, this one came out in 22, which I actually didn't know was that long ago, that was already 3 years ago. So for over 10 years now, whenever a game like this comes out, a very difficult game, and specifically very difficult with just one difficulty setting, when it happens, yep, these kinds of articles and videos happen, so Dark Souls 3 needs an easy mode, should Dark Souls have an easy mode, why having an easy mode would ruin it, so yep, lots of opinions on this debate. So like I here, so what is the correct difficulty setting for a game? And this is actually an extremely difficult game design question to answer, and different developers take on different approaches. Most games just have difficulty settings, but some developers really insist on having one specific design difficulty and that's it. This really is usually the two options that you have. You can either, as yourself, as a developer, you can play the game and you can define just one single difficulty setting that you as a developer find compelling. You can decide to do that and basically every single player has to adapt to your own difficulty. That's one option you have as a developer. And of course the other option that so many games take is simply to provide the player a multitude of options for difficulty levels. That way the player themselves they can decide do I want an easy experience, a normal experience or a hard experience. Basically Sing Song takes the second approach with only one difficulty setting and for some people that setting is just right, whereas for others it is frustratingly difficult. This is basically the one problem if you go with this approach of just having one difficulty setting, which is how for some people it won't be perfect and they won't probably get the exact experience that you as a designer intended, but for other people chances are it will be way too difficult or way too easy, and for those people they will not get the exact experience that you are trying to design for. That is the issue with going with this approach, it is pretty much impossible to make just one single difficulty setting that somehow provides the exact level of challenge to literally every single person around. But still it's up to the developer to make this choice, do they want to provide multiple difficulty options, or they want just one. Like I said, this is a debate that is pretty much never ending. I imagine that even 20 years from now, when the next Souls-like game comes out, I imagine it will still be very difficult and people will still be having this debate. Should Dark Souls and these kinds of games have an easy mode? Now on this topic, on the topic of difficulty, I actually have a theory that I have no idea if it has any basis in reality. So if, like I wrote here is, my theory is how there are basically two types of people. So one type finds a difficult boss fight to be challenging, but they can see they are making progress, and when they finally defeat the boss, they get a massive rush of endorphins that makes them feel insanely good. Whereas the other type, they find a difficult boss, but every time they lose, they just get more and more frustrated, and when they finally manage to defeat the boss, they do not get that rush of endorphins. Instead they think, oh thank god, I finally beat this stupid boss and now I can finally keep playing the game. This is my theory, I'm curious to know if some of you have felt this way how there are mainly two types of players, and the reason why I think this theory makes sense is because I've seen a lot of people describe basically the first type, how basically the more challenging it is to defeat some kind of boss or beat some kind of game, the more challenging it is, the more are the intense positive feelings they feel when they finally overcome that challenge. If I look online for reviews on the various Souls-like games, I will definitely see a lot of players that fit into that one type. However, for me, I'm very much this second type. For me, I really just feel non-stop frustration. When I finally do get over a difficult boss, I really don't feel any joy whatsoever. So that is why for me personally, I really do not enjoy the super difficult games. Like I wrote here, so I am very much the second type. I get no pleasure from finally defeating a difficult boss. I don't even feel a sense of relief. So for me, it's just never ending frustration with no positive feelings in sight. Therefore, I do not like punishingly difficult games. So basically, this is my theory on why some people love difficult games and others, like myself, hate them. I have no idea if that theory has any base in reality, but I do know that I never feel the massive sense of accomplishment that some people talk about. For me, one thing that really solidified this theory for me was when I was playing Sekiro. This was a really awesome game, I was really enjoying it in terms of mechanics, in terms of the world, the story, all of it is really excellent, I was really enjoying the game. But it is also another Souls-like game, it is another game that has just one difficulty setting and you basically have to adapt to it. And whilst fighting normal bosses, I was dying every once in a while, but I can handle that, that is not necessarily too frustrating. However, in this one, I remember that I came across this boss fight, the Butterfly Lady, and this boss fight was insanely difficult. I definitely do not have the reflexes required to play games like this on this kind of difficulty and play them well. So for this boss fight, it took me about 2 hours until I finally finished it. So for those 2 hours, I died something like 80 times, I don't know, something like that. So I was constantly trying, constantly dying. It was definitely very frustrating, very annoying. 
But still, I kept pushing through it, and after about two hours, I did manage to finally defeat her. And again, like I wrote here, when I finally managed to defeat that boss, when I did that, I did not get a rush of endorphins. Instead, I really just thought, thank god I finally defeated this boss and now I can keep playing the game, the game that I was actually enjoying. But then after playing for quite a while, I then came across another boss, this one on top of some tower, something like that. And on this one, again, same thing, for about two hours, I died like 80 times. I was constantly trying to learn the pattern, trying to actually defeat the boss, again, so I can actually keep playing the game, so I can keep enjoying the game. But I just kept dying over and over again. And after about two hours of trying non-stop, I did actually manage to finally defeat the boss, or at least I thought I defeated, and then turns out it actually goes into a second phase and becomes even more difficult. So I kept trying to defeat the boss, I kept trying to go through the first phase, getting through the second phase, dying on the second phase. I kept doing that for maybe an hour longer. I kept dying maybe 30, 40, 50 more times. And again, throughout all this time, I'm feeling an insane amount of frustration, insane amount of stress, until I really just got to the point where I pretty much just thought to myself, why am I playing this game? Am I playing this game either to get entertainment, which I'm not getting any, or to be insanely frustrated? And if so, why am I spending my free time feeling so frustrated? So yeah, that's the point when I realized, okay, this is just not worth it. That's when suddenly I pretty much had to quit the game. Even though, again, I was really enjoying the game. I was really enjoying all the mechanics, all the world, all of that. I did want to continue going through it, but I was not able to go through it without going through this boss and I could not defeat it. So suddenly, even though I wanted to keep playing the game, even though I wanted to keep seeing the story, seeing all the mechanics until the very end, basically the game pretty much hit me against the wall and nope, I can't do it anymore. So this is why I have this theory. One person, they can go through all that frustration because at the end, they do know they will feel insanely good. Basically, the worst they feel whilst they're fighting the boss is basically inversely correlated with just how great they will feel when they finally defeat that boss. But for me, I really don't get that. I really just get non-stop frustration, stress and stress. So I just got to the point where I decide, okay, I am not playing a game just to feel stressed, so I'm really just going to quit and do something else. On this topic, so the excellent channel Game Maker Soul Kid has a video on this. This video that he just published titled, What is the Point of Hard Games Anyway? And yep, again, like I said, very, very interesting discussion. I definitely recommend you go watch this video. Like I wrote here, so if you want to be a good game designer, you need to study this topic. This is not just important in terms of difficulty itself, but also super important in terms of accessibility. This is something that people sometimes don't equate, difficulty and accessibility, but they are really very much one and the same thing, or rather they are very, very tightly related. So some people, they might physically not have fast enough reflexes to beat some boss, regardless of how much they practice, and without difficulty settings, it just means the game is unplayable for them. So this is something that I feel gets lost within all of this debate, because whenever someone says the game is too hard, the people that do enjoy the hardness, the difficulty of the game, usually their reply is really just get good. But it is possible for someone to be literally physically incapable of getting good. So for those people, the game is literally just unplayable for them. And again, like I said in the beginning, I feel that this is very much just up to the developer. So I don't think any developer should be forced to do something they don't want to do. So personally, I would love to continue playing Sekiro, I would love to continue enjoying that game. So for that, I would love for From Software to update this game and add an easy mode. But I very much respect their decision, this is their vision, they want to envision a game that is this difficult, and you have to overcome this challenge if you want to go through the game. Suddenly that means that I can't really go through the game, I can't explore this awesome world that they built. But I do respect their decision, this is their game, this is their vision, this is what they want the game to be. So I wish they would implement an easy mode, but I respect the fact if they don't want to do that, if this is the vision that they want to have. And on topic of difficulty, yeah, there's actually an interesting comment on this video over here that makes the analogy to spice and food. So over here, what is the point of hard games anyway? And one of the comments, so I view difficulty in games as the same as spice in food. So tolerance and preference to spice varies on the individual. But too little means it's boring and too much means it hurts. And if it's actually a really great analogy, I've never seen this one before, but it does make perfect sense. I mean, some people go on hot ones, they eat the spiciest thing in the world and they're perfectly fine with it. Some people actually even enjoy it, which is quite insane. For me, I absolutely hate spicy food, so there's no way I would ever do this. So basically everyone has different preferences for what they like. If you give me some super spicy food, I won't eat it, no matter how delicious you tell me it is. And then very importantly, so my advice to you on this topic is how you should include difficulty settings in your own games. Basically, in the case of Silk Song and Souls games, they can get away with that, because they have massive audiences that will love the games no matter what. But for your indie games, for those, if you go with just one difficulty setting that is too hard, then you will likely get lots of negative reviews. And yep, this is definitely one massive benefit that you should not overlook. If you are a fan of these punishingly difficult games, and if you envision making just like this, making just one single difficulty setting that works fine for you, but a lot of people will probably find way too difficult. If so, then I would say be very careful with doing that because chances are you will not get the goodwill that this game has. So basically the original Hollow Knight, that was a massive hit. People love that game. So even if this game is quite a bit more difficult, if it is frustratingly difficult, 
because people love the original so much, they're definitely willing to give this one a bit more leeway and not basically just rage quit as soon as it becomes a bit too difficult. But for you, for your own indie games, chances are you don't have the insane amount of hype as Hollow Knight before. So because of that, yeah, I would recommend that you really just make your game appealing to as many players as possible. And the easiest way to do that is just have difficulty settings. If one player, like myself, wants to play on easy mode or normal mode, then just give them that experience. And if someone wants to play a really hardcore game, if you want to cater to the players that really enjoy Souls-like games, if so, then you can have an hard mode, you can have some kind of nightmare mode, some kind of new game plus mode. You can do those to cater to those players that really want an insane challenge. And you can have easy and normal modes to cater to players like myself or more casual players. And remember how difficulty also equates to accessibility. So if you make multiple different difficulty settings, if so, then your game is actually accessible to more players. So players that might physically not be able to play on the hardest levels, they can still enjoy your game if you provide them some kind of easy mode. Or better yet, some games kind of like Tunic, they provide you with pretty much options so you can pretty much modify the difficulty on almost every mechanic, everything included in the game. And that way, basically, the player can decide their own difficulty level. They can turn everything off, everything on, and make their game much easier or much harder. So yeah, personally, I hate super difficult games. And since I'm so busy and rarely have time to play games, I definitely do not want that limited time to be spent feeling feelings of frustration. So I will always pick normal or easy modes. And here's the thing that I mentioned a while ago. So I really love playing Sekiro and I really wanted to finish it. But after about three hours of dying nonstop against some boss on the tower, I just decided that the game wasn't worth the stress it was causing me. So even though I wanted to keep playing and exploring this world, I just had to quit for my own mental sanity. So personally, I'm a fan of different difficulty modes so the players can basically choose the difficulty that they want. But at the same time, I respect when the developer has a specific vision and they really want that vision. Either way, this is a very, very important topic. So when making your own games, definitely pay attention to game difficulty. It is something that might quite seriously impact how much your players love or hate your game. By the way, I wrote about this in my Game Dev Report newsletter. This is what I write every single week with the latest Game Dev news and any interesting articles that I come across every single week. There's a new issue published every Sunday. You can sign up for free, so check it out to the link in the description. And if you want to learn how to make games, then check out my free complete courses. If you want to learn the super valuable C Sharp language itself, then check out my free C Sharp course. It covers everything from the language from beginner to advanced. Or if you prefer learning how to make a game itself, you can watch my free Catch and Chaos course. That one will teach you how to make a really awesome 3D game. Alternatively, I just recently released my free Lunar Lander 2D course. So this is a great beginner 2D course. Alternatively, for multiplayer, you can check out my free course on making a simple multiplayer game. Or if you're more advanced, then check out my DOTS course. This is definitely very advanced stuff, but if you are an intermediate user, then DOTS is an insanely powerful tool that I really think you should know. So yep, check out all of those with the link in the description. Alright, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.